I'm not getting ready to even <laughs> chance it this morning. So sorry about the background. I really wanted to use it though. It was very nice at the emoji and everything. No worries. I they didn't share the emoji background with me either. So it's all right. You know, you're the lucky one. <laughs> Dr. Jim's gonna throw me under the bus. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. No, I don't know the right people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Links. <laughs> Got to know the emoji people. I'm telling you. Um, All right. <laughs> before I let people in, um, Andrea or Dr. Simmons, would you also like to be pinned um, to the chat or are you guys okay? I think we're probably right. good for now. And if, if there's a question that calls for it, we could always just jump in and stuff like that. Is there well, Should I be a, a co-host as well, just to help with the moderating? Yes, I'm actually going to do that now. So I'm, does anyone not have co-host? I'm going to make you as well, Sophia, a co-host, if that's okay. Okay. Um, all right. And I think that should be good, Dr. Let's see, Dr. Ju, are you co-host? Make co-host. All right, I'm going to let the folks in and I'm going to go radio silent. But again, we I, I think on behalf of LA City College, the Career Center in Umoja, we really appreciate you guys doing this and, um, you know, have a wonderful panel. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, LACC family. Good morning. That's my reminder to turn off my other computer. <laughs> good morning, everyone. And thank you very much for joining us. Um, we are excited for another week of Black History Month career panels. Um, today's edition will be around the arts. And we have um, a co-host um, that I'll, I'll be letting everybody introduce themselves so they can really highlight the, the major points of how they've of their journey and how they've gotten to um, us today. Um, but I first the introductions, my name is Dr. Juf. I am your Dean of Counseling here at LA City College. And so uh, my day-to-day -day entails of just creating spaces for you to be able to get all the counseling services that you um, that you might need. Um, but today I will be your co-panelist, a uh, co-facilitator. Um, and I will start off by introducing my co-facilitator today, Jessica Crooks, who will tell you a little bit more about herself uh, before we introduce um, our panelists today, Sophia Alexander. So Jessica, take it over. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Jessica Crooks. I am a, a last year and last semester student here at LACC. I am also a part of the Umoja community. Um, my current uh hats that i wear is that i am a mother i am a wife and i am currently pursuing my bachelor's degree in music industry because i currently am also wifeager with my husband who's a dj here in los angeles and we uh participate in a lot of events in venues and just uh things that happen in the city that have to do with the african diaspora uh, specifically african reggae dance hall and caribbean music and then on my side hustle because it's los angeles everyone gotta have one i do makeup and so i'm really honored that i was asked to be a part of this panel um, some of my experience in the arts and entertainment also include being a radio dj host here in los angeles on local radio and also being a part of the arts for incarcerated youth network and so facilitating a lot of programming there that help to bring a lot of music and arts and entertainment career paths to those who were not uh, necessarily exposed to them in their regular everyday lives. So thank you again to the Umoja community for having me. Thank you, Dr. Al or Ms. Alexander, for joining us and being a part of our panel. And I'm excited to be here. Thank you. I was on mute. Fantastic introduction. Thank you very much, Jessica. Um, I didn't know she was that involved. Um, I've just learned a lot. So you mentioned reggae and African music. We will need to talk about that a little bit later. But <laughs> um, we will jump right into our, our panelists. Sophia, if you'd like to introduce yourself and give us the highlights of you know how you got to us and your journey so far. Sure, absolutely. So my name is Sophia Alexander. I am the senior brand operations manager for Ipsy, which if you don't know, they're a subscription beauty service. So they have different levels that you can come in and get their bags delivered to you each month. So I oversee our monthly budget for several teams as well as operation compliance. Um, and then I also step in as like 
their events or production producer as needed. So I work both in like business operations and the entertainment art side with them as well when I need to. And then outside of that, I am a producer. So I have a number of films that I'm helping to produce right now that are in pre-production, as well as I serve on the board of directors for the Caprio Maria Marine Aquarium in San Pedro. So um, and then um, Julie actually, Juliana actually invited me uh, <laughs> to work here. I don't know if you guys know, but my mom is Alex Davis, who was a dean over at LA City College. So yeah, that's how I come to LACC. <laughs> very interesting. Well, thank you very much for coming back. <laughs> um, and you, both of you ladies wear so many hats. Um, it's I already can feel that it's going to be a really involved and great conversation here. Um, I'm going to start off because I know Jessica actually has the first question for, for, the, for our panelists, but I'm going to actually put this question to both of you. So Jessica, I'm already going off script. <laughs> Can you briefly share with us what your career journey has been thus far? And we'll start with Sophia, but Jessica, I'd also love for you to answer this question for us. So sure, Sophia, sure. take it over. Sure. So I think my journey actually started, well, I know my journey actually started in, at Cal State Long Beach. Um, I was the type of student, like anytime there was a panel or networking event, like I was there with my like one page resume that had like all my internships and like stuff I had done when I was like 16 for events and business cards that just had my name and email. And I was handing those things out to anybody who would take them. <laughs> and so that actually helped me land my first uh, internship at Fox News, which my major was journalism. So that was kind of starting my path of being in school and also doing the internships to kind of get into the field um, after graduation. Um, and that led to me actually landing a job at Fox. Um, so I worked there for a couple of years and I moved to ABC, worked in creative services there for a few years. And then I kind of landed my first event at a nonprofit called Film Independent, which at the time they were doing the Spirit Awards and the LA Film Festival. So that's kind of where I got all of my, I would say my skill set that I, you know, would have taken me 10 years to learn somewhere else. I learned there in five years just because I had to wear so many hats. Um, so it went from fundraising to event management to, um, you know, screenings, just everything that I could like get myself into, I was doing it. And whether it was making copies or grabbing someone coffee, I was doing the best of my ability whatever task was given to me, because just growing up, like I knew that my work was a reflection of me. So I made sure to execute everything at the highest level as possible. And then from there, I actually worked at the film permit office called Film LA for about two years. So working with production companies to help them uh, pull their film permit. I actually permitted the first um, drone activity in LA County, working with the fire department. So just picking up a lot of skill sets there. And then that led me to Ipsy, where I am now. An interesting journey there. Yeah. And how about you, Jessica? <laughs> uh, well, I started off actually with my first interest in business in high school and graduated from what is known as the CEO Business Academy, which taught us a lot of the basics of being in the business world. Uh, from there, I jumped immediately into employment because, you know, like Sophia said, you got to wear many hats and sometimes you can get more experience working than you uh, can initially going into school. However, after 20 years of working, I realized that I've done everything from event management to nonprofit uh, organization. Uh, I was a teacher and an arts instructor. Uh, let's see, I've done radio, I've done accounting, I've done real estate. And after doing all those things, I noticed that there was a certain blockade that I would hit a certain barrier, an obstacle. And that's because I did not finish my education. And even though I, I even worked at DeVry and you know other for-profit colleges as an admissions advisor, there was still that threshold that I needed to cross because I did not have my own education. So after about 20 years of working in the workforce, uh, I decided that I was gonna go back to school and at least obtain the first step and that's the AA or AS. And so here I am uh, going back to school after 20 years and finishing up on a degree that I started when I was 18. And so I will say that a journey never has to be in the exact time that everyone else's journey is. It's always gonna be in your own time and in your own journey. And I'm actually happy because like Sophia, like Ms. Alexander, I got a chance to wear a lot of hats. I got a chance to experience and network with so many different people that now after I graduate this uh, semester, I'll be able to go back to those same people in those networks and really tap into my fullest potential and be able to, you know, rise to the top. 
Very cool. Well, congratulations on the last semester where we're, we're rooting for you. <laughs> um, and so I'll dive right into the second question then. Um, and I'll start with Jessica this time. Given that you took a pause, you know, for, from going to school and then went into the work industry and then came back, what do you think has helped you the most in any one of those? whether it was starting school and then choosing to step away or, or whatever reason made you step away and then going through the different jobs and then coming back to school. I will say that COVID helps me realize that I needed to take the energy that I was exerting on other people and demanding that they do this excellent thing in life and look at the person in the mirror and start demanding that I too do the best that I can in life. Um, what actually helped me was working for AmeriCorps. That actually helped me turn the focus back to school because I was doing social justice work here in Los Angeles, helping with uh, juveniles who had previous records and getting those cleared from their records. And at the same time, I'm encouraging these young people and these people to go to school. And here it is, I haven't finished that one goal and dream of myself. So being able to help people actually helped me realize that I needed help and so returning back to the circle of life you become a seed once you start planting and you become a fruit and then once again you become a seed again so here I am seeding again <laughs> how about you Sophia what would you think helped you the most in your career thus far I think the golden thing for me was networking just networking and keeping your network current and just being out there and having your face forward has always helped me uh, grow and also find other opportunities um, just working alongside people. I noticed kind of maybe about five, six years ago, no further than that, that I kind of was like stagnant and I was looking around and I'm like, I've always been successful and moving up and moving in careers. And I was kind of looking around like, what is going on? And I realized I hadn't been in a situation where I'd been out networking like I used to do, like just attending events, even if it was just once a month, panels, just talking to people, you know, you meet someone at an event, just even inviting them out for coffee. And now with COVID, like Zoom meetings, like those things were so important. And not only for networking, but also just to like get information to like develop yourself and like lean on someone else and get information from them. So I think that now the, one of the reasons why I did join a board was kind of like network and, you know, grow myself and expose myself to things that I don't actually have an expertise in because you can always pick up a book like in event management or producing, but like to grow yourself and make yourself a little, you know, bigger, it's good to pick up these kind of skill sets that you don't know. So I know nothing about like the marine or aquarium world, like stepping into this role, but I'm learning so much and it's very interesting. And then I can take those skills and apply them to other areas of my life. So I'm very big on like networking, especially while you're in school, like it's the perfect opportunity. It's the easiest, it's already set up for you. And a lot of times you can like find questions on like Google to ask panelists and like figure out ways to kind of introduce yourself and to grow your network. Absolutely. I'm going to insert myself here and give you two short um, stories about networking. So I personally moved to the U.S. as an international student from West Africa 20 years ago. And on the first day of school, the first thing I had to do was orientation. And I happened to sit next to this scrawny looking I'll, I'll describe him as scrawny looking white guy that you just look, he looked nice. So I'm like, right, cool. I'll sit next to him. Um, and the first um, um, icebreaker we had to do was to take a piece oh, of sorry. toilet paper. And I said, okay. And the, 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 the toilet roll went around the table. And when it got to him, this gentleman named Andre took half the roll. And I said, what does he know that I don't know? And so I started thinking, Maybe I should take the other half of the roll. So I did. I didn't know that for every sheet of paper that we took, we would have to say something about ourselves. And I have hated him ever since. And he has been my best friend ever since. 20 years later, um, he's gone to Harvard. He is an accomplished person in his own right. But when we talk about networking, you don't even have to put yourself out there. There's people in your class. There's people that you never know how they will influence your life moving forward. And so take that opportunity to say, you look different. You sound different. You are not the typical. And I am inquisitive. And I'm going to lean in to find out something about you. And then the second one just happened to me last week. I was leading a panel like this. One of our panelists. DJ Severe of the LA uh, Dodgers 
I met on a panel and then on Saturday I was leading a hike and during the meditation it just so happens I was on the same hike with his brother who would have known and you know when he finally posted a picture of his brother I'm like I just met this guy two days ago and and that's the power of networking so please get to know the people that are in the chat or attending today get to know us um, because you never know when you will be confronted with or presented with an opportunity to to do something with one of us here because we have that expertise that you might need so i'll, I'll be yeah, quiet i'll add something to that i actually met one of my interns who is now one of our managers here at a starbucks drive through um i was wearing like some glasses from one of our creators and she recognized them because she was a fan and we just talked and i gave her my card i'm like follow up with me and it led her to being an intern and then she got a job from there on our social team. So you never know, you know, when networking, even just talking to someone about your interests will lead to somewhere. Absolutely. So Jessica, I've just made you a panelist, so don't even worry about any questions anymore. I was like, upgrade my ticket. There we are. I am a panelist now. I'm honored now to be on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll go into question three for you. Um, and and for those of you that are in the in the chat, please feel free to join. Uh, click on the link and give us any questions you might have for the panelists. As soon as we get to the end, we'll actually open it up for you to be able to interact with both panelists. And I think we have enough time to do that. So uh, jot down your questions, because we definitely want to get to them. Um, so the third question we had would be, what advice would you give to people who want to enter the field that you're in? And I'll start with you, Sophia, like in the field that you're currently in, I know you mentioned networking, or would there be any other things that you'd say as students, they need, we need to prioritize some of those things if you want to get uh, our foot in the door? Yeah, I would say networking. And also if they're like, if you're into event arts, like find places that are having events and donate your time, like volunteer, like you never know who you're going to meet. And, you know, also as us running those events, we're looking for people to hire for events in the future. And if you're reliable and you do a good job, like we're going to remember you. I've hired so many people from past events to come in and work more events and even travel with us to like New York, um, Texas, you know, because they're so good. I'd rather hire someone that I know and worked with, you know, as opposed to someone new and the newer people, like I said, I keep track of them and I work with them, but it kind of just helps set the bar for the next stage. So even though it might be, you know, it might be hard on you to donate your time. Like maybe you don't have, you know, a babysitter or even, you know, a job that will allow you like find somewhere where you can give back. A lot of these things are virtual now. Um, even if it's just like, hey, can I assist you? Like I can do uh, run RSVPs for you or I can help you with collateral, just anything in your free time, just to kind of get your foot in the door. And at least you have someone who can be a reference for you when you go to like apply for jobs in the field but definitely start getting yourself out there volunteering a lot of these things are circuits so even though it's different events like the same people are working in those circuits so you'll get your name known absolutely and i had the same question for you jessica and in, in the opportunities you've had with your husband what advice uh because you mentioned you collaborate with him what advice would you give people who would like to enter the field that um you're getting a degree to get back into I'm going to second and follow up with Ms. Alexander and say definitely networking. Um, the amount of people that I've been exposed to and not just being exposed to people, but to communities and to cultures makes me more tolerant and it makes me have to practice empathy more because I have to sit here and you know listen actively and be uh, engaged in conversations that I may not know all of the perspective of, but I have to be respectful and, and incorporate those into what it is I'm going to be doing. My main goal is to get into the the industry so that we that we as black people the african diaspora can control the narrative that's being spoken about us through arts and entertainment and a lot of times we don't have the business side of it on our side because we don't historically have never been included in that process so for me networking has given me opportunity not only to learn about people, but also about the business and what are the, the side things and the inside notes and the little things that make it particular for regions. So, you know, just listening, being an active person in the any community. And like Ms. Alexander said, being involved in the uh, philanthropy side of it, I'll say, because giving back your time is almost just as valuable, if not more valuable than giving your money, because anybody can just donate, but it takes you being present in the moment to give your time. So networking, empathy, and communication. Same thing as Alexander said. 
very cool. I think you added the intentionality to exactly what Sophia was saying, which is yeah. be intentional about being there, meeting those people, learning the sides of the business that nobody will give you for free. It's not something that you could learn if you went to school, but by rubbing shoulders with those folks and setting up those events, all of a sudden you're, you're learning the back end of things, how things are run, what are the X and O's that, or the T's that are crossed before an event is put on, who are they contacting? Um, and that's gold for the next person that wants to hire you to do those things. <laughs> Yeah. And also, like Jessica said, being present and having the right attitude, like you may not know or have the skill set, but like I will take anyone willing to learn and with a great attitude than someone who has like 15 years experience with a bad attitude. Like I'd rather work with the person who's hungry for it and really has a positive attitude and wants to grow. Very cool. That leads directly into the fourth question, which is what barriers or challenges in your career have you experienced and how did you overcome them? Because it sounds like you you both did wore quite a few hats. And so what made you switch and pivot to the next opportunity and the next opportunity? And I'll start with you, Jessica. Um, I've always been interested in business. So I knew directly that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to facilitate the process of creating economies and creating money for people. I've also wanted to be compassionate <laughs> in what it is I did. So when I first started my first jobs, it was like, you know, customer service, uh, food and hospitality. Then I moved up to administration. Um, with like a, being a receptionist, being a secretary. And then it would be like, oh, you can now do real estate. You're a leasing agent in Hollywood. And then things like racism and sexism would come up the higher you go up in these uh, career paths. And that's when I was first confronted with, what do you want to do intentionally? We know you can make money. We know you have the skill set to make money, but what is it you're going to be left with the legacy of your spirit in what you did? And now that I'm taking philosophy class, big up to Professor Torres, I'm learning that, you know, the Buddhist way is the middle path. And even in when your intentions to make a living, that should also include you know, being of a balanced spirit. And so after working in real estate, I realized it was too uh, racist and too sexist. I realized that a little bit after working in nonprofit sectors, some of these nonprofits would prefer you facilitate their programming because they would rather continue being able to get funding rather than lift people out of the situation so that there's no longer this problem. So it's a lot of things that you that I I struggled with as far as me personally. And then as far as external obstacles it was education. I didn't have any education. I was sitting here selling what I didn't have and <laughs> it was a barrier for me. Uh, so the thing to overcome that is definitely get to action and go twice as hard. So within a year and a half I've you know, taking lots of classes. Um, Andrea, my counselor, thank you so much again for inspiring me and keeping me on track. And here we are last semester and I'm almost out. So education and just the normal things that you go through as an African-American in the workplace, just, you know, racism and sexism, it's, it's there, it's still there. How about you, Sophia? I wholeheartedly agree with Jessica. Um, definitely throughout my career, what um, I've had to do is just learn to like stand up for yourself, like whether you're a person of color or even a woman, like there are just, there's going to be those obstacles in whatever field you're in. So one, I had to accept that <laughs> no matter, it wasn't just this particular job, it was going to be anywhere I went. So I had to make sure that, you know, if I was leaving a job because I wasn't getting what I wanted from that job, that I wasn't moving to another job where I was going to be facing those same obstacles because I could just fix those where I was as, as opposed to starting over. But also just having a network that I can bounce ideas off. Because what I started noticing is, like Jessica said, the higher I moved up, the harder it was for me. Even having degrees, it was harder for me to get those promotions because they were one, wanting me to come with experience because I knew I had the education, but I wasn't getting the opportunities to gain the experience. And then I had to look at it from the perspective of a woman and a black woman and notice that, okay, my counterparts are giving giving these opportunities because their brain works that way, whereas I had to do the work with the lesser title in order to get the promotion and then have work piled on top of me on top of that. So I had to learn how to advocate for myself like, hey, if we're all 
checking these boxes to move to the next level, then I should be hitting those levels with my counterparts. And I wasn't. So it's definitely learning how to advocate for yourself. And it's it's uncomfortable. And that's why having a network and, you know, being exposed to people who have more experience, you are higher up, you can bounce those ideas off. So you know how to address the situation. And I think that is um, just part of having a community. Like I make sure anytime I can give an opportunity to someone of color or minority in my organization so that one day I have everyone at my level who looks like me or people above me that look like it's important to bring people up behind you and to continue to grow your community and your network so you don't feel like you're alone in these opportunities. Because I am like, I think there's four people at the top and two of them are VP level and then the rest of us are senior manager and everyone else under me is junior. So it's very important that, you know, once you get exposed and get in these spaces that you look for the people who look like you, make your community strong and then also advocate because by advocating for yourself, you're also advocating for those others who are going to be dealing with the same things that you just went through. So I think that is part of my advice. Like, yeah, we want to move up and we want to move up quickly, but get your experience and advocate for yourself because all they can say in, is no. And if you get that no, then you know, okay, this is the right move for me to move on to a new a new place. Absolutely. Um, there's a common thread I think both of you are hitting here when we spoke about networking and now the barriers is at least in my experience, when you're networking with people who have something to offer that you don't know, it's also an opportunity for you to learn. For example, let's say there's a barrier at work that's related to racism or sexism. I now know the perspective of the other person because I've networked with people that don't look like me, that don't sound like me, that don't come from the communities I come from. And it makes it easier for me to start dealing with that gap if it's solvable at my current place of employment. And if it was somebody that was, you know, a fellow African-American or, you know, person of color, then I also have somebody to commiserate with and say, okay, how did you deal with this when you were confronted with this situation? Because I, we are not the first people to deal with racism or sexism or colorism at work, unfortunately. So there's people like us that have that have been faced with these challenges. And so the more you network, the more I will be able to say, I know Jessica now. I can speak to her about her experience, and maybe that will inform how I approach the, the issue. So definitely, I would say networking is key. Be intentional about the networking because some of these people are folks that you can pick their brains on how it is that they're moving through the world, and that might help you um, in your your ways of moving the world. It won't be the same, but you'll figure it out. Um, just because someone isn't in the same field as you, even at work, doesn't mean that you can't speak with them. Like anytime someone new starts at my company, I'm like, hey, can we do a coffee date or like a walk and talk just to like, one, introduce myself, let them know they have a friend and also just to like pick their brain. Like you may have something in common with them that you didn't even realize, like even outside of work. So it's just important to keep the community going. And like, like I said, building your network wherever you can, it doesn't matter if it's in class or, you know, at Starbucks or at work, like just continue to like meet people and network. Absolutely. So I, I think we actually dove right into the next question, which was um, how well represented do you feel as an African-American in your field? <laughs> so we already know what the numbers look like uh, on, in Sophia's industry, um, or at least specifically at EPSI. Um, how about the industry at, at large? Um, are there opportunities that still exist for our students that are hungry and still looking to get in, their foot in the door? I think there are. Um, I know a lot of companies just in the last couple of years are really pushing diversity and equity within their organization. So um, if there's something that students are interested in, like it doesn't help to it doesn't hurt to help, you know, to um, email a recruiter or even hit them up on LinkedIn like, hey, or even if you see someone with your job skills, um, hey, you know, I'm really looking to get into what you do. Your skills look amazing. Like, can we have a quick 15 minute or can you, you know, would you mind answering some questions for me? Like people want to help. And so if you see someone who's at a company that you want to be at or has a skill set, like email them, like it doesn't hurt. All they can say is no. Like I even go so far as if I'm interested in a job at a company and I see someone had it before, I will email them like, hey, can you tell me your experience? about that company, like, you know, how is it, you know, just objectively, um, because the more information you have, the better it is for you going into a company or even into 
a job. So, you know, you think you want to do events now, but like you don't have much experience. Even talking to someone will help you gain the experience. Like, okay, is this something that I really want to go in? Because there's so many avenues into events. It's not just being an event producer, like you can be, you know, operations, you can be, you know, secure. there's so many different fields, just like with um, film production, like not everyone needs to be a producer. There's just, there's lighting, there's engineering, you know, there's everything. So you want to try, especially while you're in school, to expose yourself to as much as possible. So that'll help you focus on what your skills are and what you like to do. Because just even over time, I've noticed that my love is operations, even though it's been in events, it's been in production, it's been a nonprofit, like I like compliance, I like organization, I like making stuff happen behind the scenes to make sure that, you know, everything executed as seamlessly as possible. So, and that comes with time and experience and exposure. Very cool. How about you, Jessica, in your experience before going back to school, did you feel well representative in, in, in the different fields? You mentioned working at DeVry, you mentioned doing uh, makeup, you mentioned like this, there's a few different industries there that you participated in. Right. And no, never felt well represented. Most of the times I was probably the only black person in the room. And then if I wasn't the only black person in the room, I was the most Afrocentric black person in the room. And a lot of times that got me in trouble. You can see my hair. I've had to be ask, asked to wear natural hair color to work because it was distracting the flow of business or told that my nails were too ex extravagant and too eccentric. I needed to tone it down to something more natural and office-like. And then, you know, five, 10 years later, here it is the trend that is moving sales. And so a lot of time I worked in intangible sales and, and in marketing. And like Sophia, Miss Alexander was saying, the operations, the behind the scenes of a lot of things is what I also enjoy. And so being able to be a program uh, coordinator at the no nonprofit I worked at, it was my duty to not only, you know, put together the events and the programs, but to also do the hiring, the HR. I was also in charge of, you know, the radio station and booking talent for that, you know, aspect of it. And so after you wear a lot of hats, you just finally see that, yo, it's not very many Black people where I am. And then my goal of being either an AR or, you know, going into the music industry, there are definitely not a lot of Black women there. And if they are, they're being asked to do talent and operations. And that to me is like Miss Alexander was saying, people are getting these jobs based on what their brain is doing, but you want me to go out there and sell first and then do operations. And I, I didn't go to school for beauty. I went to school to prove that my brain operates the same way that everybody else who has to check these boxes to have this job is doing. And so as a woman, like I said, I've met with all kinds of obstacles from like one time a leasing, a, a potential leaser was like, hey, do you know how to twerk? And I'm like, sir, I'm here to do your financials. I'm here to look at your social security number. I'm doing a lot of business here. Why would you break that to ask me if I knew how to twerk? And so a lot of times you have to shut it down, like Miss Alexander say, stand up for yourself and speak for yourself. Of course, I didn't lease to them because I hold the power. But at the same time, it was still like a reality check, like, wow, it doesn't matter how high up or where I go. Someone is always going to try to either demean me or make me feel a little bit insecure by inserting some kind of stereotype or inserting some type of, you know, just tension in the in the in the conversation. So yeah, nope, not a lot of black people, but I'm going and I don't care how many don't go. I'm going, I'll be there. <laughs> well, congratulations. And I think it, it's great. It's a great uh, uh, anecdote to share with everybody else because that is the truth. We will be faced with uh, ignorant comments like that and and they don't they never go away I mean I, I can tell you I've been in my industry education for almost 20 years now and I got one yesterday you, you look like a student yep I know I look like a student but when you walk through the door it did say I was the dean so how can I help you <laughs> you know and you politely just not check them, but remind them that this is what we came to do, business. So how can I help you? Um, and it's something that you need to be aware of so that you also do not, um, you, you take from, you know, one of my favorite people, Michelle Obama, you go high. You know, if they want to go low, you remind them that you're on this frequency, not this one. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Um, we'll jump right into the sixth question. I can't believe we're already at the sixth question already. Um, do you have any specific advice for African Americans that wish to enter your field? I feel like both of you have already touched on this as it related to the networking and over uh, avoiding the obstacles, but and, and also reaching out and giving your time. Are they so I've seen this, especially in the arts industry, I think it is, um, it may not be the easiest to get into just because of the, I'm not an artsy person, that's my sister, she's the one that can draw, create, think, write poetry, and I feel like all of those that were, you know, drawn to come to this panel, maybe already have that, whether it's left brain or right brain, I don't know which one it is. It's how do they take that skill set that they already have and figure out how to do the business piece of getting their foot in the door, that first internship, what, making sure that their resume stands out from the rest and represents them, you know, like, like Jessica says, you know, setting up a resume so the person that's reading the resume expects you to come with eccentric hair. You know, they, they already see that coming. They're like, okay, I want to see that personality coming through. Is there, are there any things like that that you would recommend, you know, our students think about or be intentional about when they're trying to get into the industry? And I'll start with you, Ms. Alexander. Sure, like um, I think I mentioned before, um, going on LinkedIn and seeing someone has the job that you want, like look at their LinkedIn, take their skill set um, and add it to yours. If there are things on their um, LinkedIn skills that you can do, add those to your resume, add that to your LinkedIn. Um, when you're looking at these job postings, like make sure you're taking like the key elements that they're requiring requirement which are normally like the first three bullets of a job and add that to you if you can do it add it to your resume and if you can't hit those people up on linkedin and say hey like what was your journey like do you have any advice um about how i can enter in this organization are there any areas where i can volunteer where i can learn this stuff um you know do you guys do a career shadowing there um there's some organizations where you can go in and you can volunteer and just kind of you know they have those give back opportunities um where you can come in we've done it at my job so it's just asking the questions um even with your teachers like a lot you know they're there because they have an expertise and they can give Give you advice as well panelists you meet um anything can be kind of a networking opportunity so that would be my advice and then also just continue to learn like you're going to deal with um, situations that are going to be awkward and uncomfortable but that's in every aspect of your life so be intentional about how you deal with those situations because it helps you grow to deal with the next level um, that you're going to be exposed to. So whether that is dealing with customers who, you know, are irate, like take that as a learning experience. I worked in parking enforcement in uh, college. So I was like cursed out on a daily basis. People upset that they got a boot on their car or, you know, and my advice to them was like, look, I can let you vent and I can tell you how to fight it or you can pay it. Like those are your two options. So <laughs> you let me know once you calm down, which one it's like, you don't that personally you take it as an opportunity to learn um and yes it's frustrating we all get frustrated but don't like he said with michelle obama we you know when they go low we go higher don't fall, don't feed into it because that's what they want when they address you at those levels with that type of anger so take it as a learning opportunity and if it's something that you can't handle just you know politely like walk away like okay let's have this conversation at a later day when we're both even killed so yeah, that's my advice is just try to get as much exposure, experience, um, advice. Um, you'd be surprised how many people actually like giving back and will help you, especially as students. I love students like those are my heart. So I will always take time to help a student, especially because I was one before. So and I understand. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. Jessica, did you want to chime in? Advice for students, reach out to your Emoja community counselors. You never know what panel you could be asked to facilitate and then end up being on the panel. So that's what I would say. Reach out to those networks because you never know. You know, this is an opportunity that now has put me in front of plenty of people who are working and doing things in other industries that I resonate with and could resonate with me. Um, Ms. Alexander, I'll definitely be giving you my contact sliding in the DMs after this 
because I, I am in love with your journey. I'm in love with where you're going with this. And when I seen the flyer panel, I was like, oh, it's future me. And so, you know, like she said, look at people who you want to emulate, emulate success. You know, we have enough people doing average and below average. Why be a C student when you can be a B or A student? So just take advantage of all the things that the campus is offering because it'll get you exposure and exposure in time will get you in the right places in the right spaces in front of the right faces so that's my advice and thank you and be humble because this is a very humbling experience and once again thank you for allowing me to be here no thank you jessica i'll, I'll say this honestly i feel like if there's anything i can tell any of our students that are listening right now is that you already have a skill set that is shareable with your counterparts. That's why you we're, we're pushing you to asking you to network. Um, Jessica and I met what 15 minutes before we did this. And it's just in conversation that we realized that there are nuggets there that she can share with all of you and that are you know key that I could learn from. So even if if I could learn from them, I, we've we figured that you could as well. So don't think it's any it's too late or too early for you to start putting yourself out there and learning. I mean, even if you do something that's uncomfortable, the next time you do it, you'll be a little bit more prepared and a little bit more prepared. And next thing you know, you're doing TED Talks and we're looking at you like, how did they get there? Well, there was that one opportunity that I got to speak in front of others. <laughs> um, great. Um, thank you to you both. Um, I think we'll... Um, pivot a little bit into one of the questions that was in the chat, which was related to financial literacy. So the question says, how important, how important is it to manage finances in terms of making moves in the arts and entertainment field for young black professionals? Um, so the idea is really specifically on financial literacy. How important is it in terms of making moves in the arts and entertainment industry? If, uh, Ms. Alexander? Financial literacy is important. It is business, personal, like it is important to understand how your money works and how your money can work for you. And just, um, and it also helps take away like the fear, like, okay, can't, you know, if you're in a job that is not your, your love or your passion, like, do you have the financial backing to be like, okay, I'm going to take some time off two to three months to get to where I need to be because I've wasted so many time, you know, so much time in this field that I didn't want to be in. So I think one, like understanding your own, um, financial security, like I, I did that. I didn't learn that until my late twenties about saving and just having a kitty to sit on. And that kind of learning, even learning after the beginning has helped me to save and have the ability to walk away from situations that aren't serving me. So in addition to that, I've also moved into being able to oversee my entire team's uh, budget, which is, you know, well over $12 million for, you know, in a year. So being trusted with that, because I understand like one, my own personal savings and two, how that affects business operations um, and how to build a budget. Like it, it's, it's so important. Um, to learn, it doesn't have to be the um, center of your expertise, but even just having an understanding how budgets act and how they move will move you so far, far along in your career. And also, like I said, your personal life. So um, if you have an opportunity to take a class that deals with like budgeting or just basic business, I do it, <laughs> like do it. I think that that should be a requirement for everyone, especially people of color, because we don't understand, you know, how money moves. We don't even understand like how our money doesn't even stay in our community long after it's earned by us and how other communities, it stays there for weeks at a time. So it's, it's, it's so important. I would definitely say uh, take some business classes. Awesome. I could see Jessica nodding. So we agree. <laughs> Take the accounting classes. It has helped me so much, not only just budgeting my personal life, but being able to go back and rethink all of the times that I've had to prepare a budget for a, a grant that was received at a nonprofit and how we had to break the hours up amongst 13 different you know, chill, uh, youth who were working so many hours. To, it, like take the classes, don't be afraid of the math. Uh, also, like Ms. Alexander was saying, uh, historically, we never had that generational wealth to pass down so that we could build upon. So make sure that you are comfortable and able to move forward in this. And then I apologize if my sound is breaking up. I live by the airport. 
<laughs> That's totally fine. Um, just an anecdote here. Um, financial literacy is something that we all struggle with. Um, my parents have a graduate degree and I still grew up in a household where I didn't know what my parents make. It wasn't until I had to check off a box in the SATs. Yes, I'm that old where, you know, SATs were bubbled in in paper and pencil. And when I was asked well, how much my parents made, I had no clue. They both worked, but it, finances was not something we shared at home. And so when I got to college is as an economics and business major is when I was actually learning, you know, assets and liabilities and what goes on the left side and the right side of the balance sheet. And that has actually helped me oversee everything that I do, even at a college campus. We have funds, we have grants. That's the way we're able to put on events like these. And so in any industry that you're gonna go into math, accounting, the basics are things you need to know. So that at least you can, you know, budget your time, your life and, and navigate through it. So uh, take that class. It will not be, uh, my boss is actually was here. I think he's left, but I was going to tell an interesting story because when I took my accounting class back in the day, I wasn't doing too well. And guess who got me through it? My current boss. So I'm glad I, I took that class with him. <laughs> um, and then right. I'll also add, um, Financial literacy will also help you with salary negotiations. Like I've been in situations where company will be like, what are your salary requirements? And then just like basic investigation, like I learned that they not only when they ask you that, they're asking you for your base salary, as well as your restricted grant unit, as well as your bonus. And so if I had not, not known that information, I would have given them a total number that was way below mark value of what actually paying their employee. So it, understanding how that works and like how that leans into your salary like even if you're married if your husband has a salary you can ask for 10 grand more on top of your salary and tell them you're not going to take the health care because you're going to be on your husband's health care like understanding yeah. how that I mean, works I mean, I mean, I mean, a, a higher salary and will help you in your journey did you guys listen to that if you're married you can negotiate to get a higher salary because some of the benefits that they would have offered you, you're already getting through your spouse. So that's something to keep in your back pocket. <laughs> All right. Um, a question that came in the chat was also, how do we find events where we can network? What resources are available for us? And being new to Los Angeles makes me feel a little lost when looking for the door to the industry. Having an AA in progress instead of having it already seems to be a block in the road when applying to companies in general. Ha, true. You don't have the degree yet. Um, but it doesn't mean that you couldn't already st start the networking process. Um, what, how do we find events and what resources are available for us? So as a college, I'll start from there and then I'll let the panelists respond. As a college, you, both your career center and your um, Emoja uh, counselors have access to different events that we get to know about because industries want to hire. We have a career fair that's coming up. I don't know if David and Carolyn are here, but we have a career fair in the spring that's about to come up in two months. We, we really have been pushing it back because we want to do something that's safe and in person. So we're trying to see what the, the, the rules will be with LA Public Health, but we have a ton of employers that are looking for people like you they know that we are the ones that have the purchasing power and so they would like to have people like us working with them to be able to create the products that they would need so keep in touch with people like david turcott um he's in the he's in the audience so just uh, tag him juliana dr simmons andrea Eki, and i think carolyn is here as well um, because as soon as you tap into them, they will continue sending you all these different opportunities that come up um, on a daily basis. Uh, we actually have a newsletter that we send out. Um, so if you haven't, you're not currently receiving it, let us know and we'll be able to get you in the door. Um, and just one um, word uh, of advice before I got my degree, I just volunteered. I had a, an instructor that was teaching a class at 7 a.m. And I would volunteer to go set up his class. You know, back in the day, setting up a PowerPoint presentation wasn't something that was as easy for him to do. And I knew how to do that. And so I volunteered my time. Next thing you know, I'm TAing for the class. Next thing you know, I know how to set up the syllabus and everything else to teach the class. And I never went into teaching per se, but I do know what good teaching looks like. I do know what an instructor needs to be able to focus on you, the student, instead of everything else that might be going off wrong. And I was 19 or 20 at the time. So I would say to you, 
look for those opportunities because the, somebody will say yes, even without a degree, because there's something that you bring to the table. Um, Jessica, have you had any of those experiences before I take it to Ms. Alexander? Uh, and run it by me one more time because I was agreeing with you so wholeheartedly, I forgot what I was agreeing with. I was just looking at ways in which um, someone could start getting the networking experience, even yes. if they have their AA in power. Uh, Eventbrite and Instagram. Eventbrite is always going to be posting events that are generated towards uh, organizations and events that are like curated by people who have like the budgets to curate them. So it's not going to be like, not saying like a low budget thing, but you want to go for something that's going to be progressive. Also, uh, volunteering uh, definitely at different community organizations and especially at the parks. Uh, our youth are wanting to see the next, the older generation come back and you know help show them the way too. So at the same time, not only are you getting your foot in the uh, door as far as like meeting other people who facilitate these type of programming, but you can also get your foot in the door with the programming itself. Once you start volunteering at parks to do after school programming and maybe teach teach kids how to paint, because that's where I kind of started with the whole nonprofit thing. You get asked to, you know, hey, do you know how to teach a class? And from teaching a class, can you run a program? And from running that program, you're asked to now facilitate 15 programs for all of the parks for their entire winter session for two weeks. So progression by starting off small on the ladder and then kind of just finding yourself in the niche of what it is you like to do and just letting your talents shine, you know? ultimately at the end of the day your work will speak for itself and if you can get your foot in the door by somebody knowing you and plugging you in or letting your work speak for itself at the end of the day you've already set the right tone for what it is the ethic you want to show in your work so volunteer definitely and then event bright and instagram that's where i find out all the events are and who's doing what and who's trending because i like marketing as well and i want to stay current with what's moving forward so those are my two go-tos, Instagram and Eventbrite. Cool. Oh, how about you, Ms. Alexander? I will add to what Ms. Jessica said. So also Facebook and LinkedIn, um, all of those sites you can search by interest. So whatever your interests are, there are tons of events. LinkedIn also has learning uh, classes on there. I think it's called Linda, but they're like free opportunities to like take different classes to like learn marketing, learn business, learn HR, learn communications, um, and also start with your Moja community. They have tons of events. Um, you can volunteer with them and trust me, their network is wide and vast. Um, I always find people through Juliana. I'm, she'll see something that I post and she's like, hey, I have a student who's interested in that, but she wouldn't know she had a student if that student hadn't stayed in contact with her and you know volunteered and expressed her their interest to her so definitely start at school i started at school with different organizations and then i ended up working with our um, student community center and i still keep in contact with all my counselors everyone who ran those organizations and so anytime opportunities come up i'll either recommend someone i've worked with or uh, recommend someone that I know that's reached out to me like hey I'm interested in events I'm like hey there I came across this opportunity if you're interested let me know and I'll refer you so definitely start at school that's the easiest way in and you guys have like a community there that you can reach out to and you know if they don't have opportunities for you to volunteer they can at least know that you have an interest and recommend you um, to that to another um, organization and also convention centers like just looking at what events they have there and then you can look at and see what agencies are putting on those events because those agencies are always looking for um, people to volunteer so you know it's just doing your research and you know like I said the easiest way in is basically to start at school especially with organizations like the Emoja community um, they can definitely be a start for you and like that will lead you to all kind of avenues. Awesome, awesome. I can see that in the chat, um, folks have been um, echoing exactly what both of you have been saying as it related to the linked learning on LinkedIn, uh, different opportunities that exist. Uh, the LACC Career Center on IG has updated events. So if you're not following us yet on IG, do that right now. I feel like one of those YouTube videos where they're telling you to link and subscribe. Well, subscribe now <laughs> because, yeah, whether it's the left side or the right side. And to be honest with you, we put on all of those events and I see somebody picking up their phone. I think it's Yago. Please, thank you. You're following instructions. There you go. Um, no, but honestly, we put on all of these events and we curate them for you. 
I will most likely never be going back to college to get a degree. But all the information I have gotten, we want to share with you. Like Ms. Alexander said, she wants to help students because she's been in your shoes. So please follow us on these specific sites so we can share that information with you. Um, and both the virtual and in-person, uh, so it's going to be a virtual internship fair on March 14th. Uh, March 14th uh, would be the virtual in, uh, internship fair. So it's a little less than a month. We're already at the end of February already. So uh, get your resumes ready. If you don't have all of that uh, ready to go, come see us. We'll get you prepared before March 14th so you can you know, put your best foot forward. Let's see, I'm trying to scan through the chat to make sure I don't forget anything. And I'll yeah. also add with jobs, always apply, always apply. Even if you don't think you have the skill set, apply because it does not hurt to interview. And if you get an email back from a recruiter, you can say, hey, you know, thanks for replying. Like, do you have any feedback for me? Ask for feedback on your resume. Ask for feedback on that interview if you didn't get the position. Um, it doesn't hurt and it prepares you for the next opportunity. Don't ever let what's listed on a job description deter you from applying because that is just a generic set of requirements and they're looking for the right person. And if you're the right person, they'll make it happen for you. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I, I've worked several jobs that I got from Craigslist, and that led me to the opportunity. My first uh, property management position was like eight dollars an hour. You can live here and just do that. But I realized that once you work a position, they can never take the title or the skill sets from you. And so it's like a guarantee that no, I did this because even if you volunteer, you still did the work, even though you if even if it was like an internship. So, uh, like Miss Alexander was saying, do not be afraid to go out there and set yourself up for success. And that means taking a risk on what it is you believe you can do. And if you feel like you can do it, go out there and do it. If you feel like you don't know how to do it, uh, emulate somebody that does know how to do it and learn in the process. Or like they say, fake it till you make it. And then uh, hopefully you'll achieve it if you believe it. Yeah. Very cool. Jessica, I'll add to that. The skill set is a skill set. So whether you are doing an event for a daycare or you know, a McDonald's, the skill set behind event management is the same across the board. So get your skills where you can and put that on your resume, especially if that is the industry that you want to go into. Very cool. So I have to quickly pop off this chat because I have another meeting starting right now. So I'm going to get them going and come right back to you because this is uh, probably going to be my favorite meeting of the week. <laughs> I'm going to leave you in trusted hands um, of one of your uh, Emoja counselors. So Andrea, do you want to take over? Or oh, Dr. Simmons, please, whoever was going to want to take over, I will be back in about 10 minutes. Um, yeah, and real quick, what was the, um, I just pulled up the last questions in the chat. What, what question were we on? We had just finished with um, Iago's question, and for, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name. You said yeah. it right. Yeah, Iago. Okay, Iago. Um, I also, um, so that's where we left off yet with, with Iago's question. And I also wanted to um, piggyback on this. Um, Iago, uh, we may need to talk offline because next week we have an A2 Men Conference, which is our African American Male Education Network Development um, Conference that happens every year. And that is an amazing opportunity for you to network with other young professionals, African-American males like yourself. There's going to be a lot of different speakers. Um, this conference usually has like, what, 2,000 people at it? Dr. Simmons, um, it's held by the LAX Hotel. We do have an additional seat that opened up. And so I definitely think that might be a great opportunity for you to get plugged in and kind of be able to connect with other professionals and even, you know, connect with other students. And there's going to be lots of different breakout sessions and workshops um, of people that you can probably connect with as well. So I'm definitely going to um, connect you to that if you'll be interested. Yeah, I would. Thank you, Andrea. No problem. And all of those, I'm not sure if everyone here is a Yamoja student, um, but hopefully you um, you are. And if you aren't, you will join the Yamoja program because this is part of what we do. We also help students academically, but also connecting them with their major to their career and providing those internship opportunities and networking um, um, options as well. So I don't know, Dr. Simmons, did you see another question in the chat? So I think that was the, the last uh, question. Stevie had a question in regards to upcoming opportunities. Um, live performances, stuff like that. Uh, David had shared that we have some events with the Career Center coming up. Um, Emoja, we still have another week of Black History Month, so we do have um, a lot of um, collaboration events with our district coming up. So make sure you check out your emails if you're already part of the program. 
Um, there should be some flyers in there that pretty much outline all of the upcoming activities. So other than that, let's see. Um, I think there was one question from Adeline. Let's see. I'm not, I think you all may have addressed this already, but she's asking about networking. She wanted to know ways that you have networked and maybe events that are open to others. So yeah. if either of y'all can tap into that. Okay, go ahead, Sophia. Yeah, I like I said, um, I find things, whether it is on LinkedIn or uh, Facebook, just anything that I'm interested in, I will... Um, network so the way that i i will talk about my board opportunities so i'm on the board of directors for um cabrillo marine aquarium facility and um the way that i got on the board is actually i went to an event that they were having a fundraising event and i just spoke to people and let them know that i was interested in joining a board and then uh started talking about like my experience and expertise and operation and budget management and it led to them having an opportunity for you know someone to come in and help them you know kind of manage their event stuff and like kind of set um processes in place so it's it's really um it's really up to you um whatever you're interested in like find those those places like I will network at a food event like and talk to people who have food trucks because you know my company from time to time will do conventions where we have food truck uh, vendors come <laughs> on site so I'm always like in the mode of networking um, just kind of whatever my interests are at that particular time. Um, and like I said, you can even start with uh, the emoji community, you know, they have tons of events and they will always stay to the ground with upcoming events. Um, start with them because like I said, their networks are vast too. So you never know where, you know, they may not have an opportunity, but someone in their network may be looking for someone and they can recommend you. So I definitely would stay connected with them. Um, I'll say that my initial experience as far as working in uh, nonprofit program coordinating actually started because my sons and I were homeless and we were staying at the uh, URM mission downtown in LA and an organization came to do free lunches for us and then told us that they were having this kind of like youth night where they were playing games and doing stuff with families. So my sons were like, yeah, mom, let's go check it out. Let's go check it out. And even at the bottom of what was a despairing situation, I still found the strength to at least put myself out there to go do something with my kids and ended up at this uh, nonprofit that was actually, you know, doing really good work in the community. And from talking to the director, I seen her like passing out lunches. And my first question was like, do you need some help passing out the food? And from there, she handed me a set of keys. I got a business card. I had an office. And then from there, it was just like, okay, and this is your entire budget for the next year. These are your grants. Facilitate these, hire teachers. So even if you think you are at the bottom of a situation of disparity, do not let that, uh, deter you or make you too afraid to still go out there and pursue your goals and your dreams because for me every type of emotion can be tra transferred and channeled into motivation and even if i'm sad about a situation take that and find the motivation to make it better if i'm angry at a situation try to find that and take the motivation to make the situation or myself more understanding or make the situation better so just being able to channel different energies and still continue to improve yourself is just like how I got out there and not being afraid, you know, even today this they asked me yesterday, hey, can you help with I was just like, yes, I'm available, make yourself available. There's always going to be time for you to be on Instagram, there's always going to be time for you to be scrolling through TikTok, but are you always going to have the time to go out there and make yourself visible in the realm where you want to be seen, because no one can see you from your home, you have to actually kind of be present and be there. And to add to what Jessica's saying, like, I was nervous, like my first, um, my first job where I had to, to, to go to an event that was out of state, like I literally had an anxiety attack because I had never like really been in a situation where I had to network with complete strangers. And I had to like go up to my room and kind of reset and understand like, okay, let's, let's put some goals together. Let's make a goal tomorrow to meet three different people, ask them these questions and get these business cards, like take small steps. If you are nervous or 
whether or not you believe it or not, I'm an introvert working out, working hard to be an extrovert. So I have to do these kind of exercises to kind of help myself get out there, as well as taking communication classes. Like if you're afraid to, to speak in front of you know the public, take a class, take a speech class. Um, I also took an acting class. I have no interest in acting whatsoever, but it forced me to kind of put myself out there and be vulnerable and know that it's okay and like take the feedback and understand like how I can connect with an audience. That that was the, the scariest thing I've ever done, but it helped me in the long run to be a better businesswoman, to be able to advocate for myself, have these difficult conversations, approach people who are strangers that I don't have, you know, a connection with, that I don't have a friend there to kind of hold my hand. So if you're not at the stage where you're okay with, you know, kind of networking with people, then take a class that will help you along the way. Um, and join organizations. There's like speech and debate, there's communication, there's theater class, you know, organizations at your school that you can join that'll help you kind of get rid of that fear so that you can, you know, advocate for yourself and help move your career along. Cause you know, like they said, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. So the more you can learn to open your mouth and like put yourself out there and put, put yourself in a good light, you know, just building those skills, the better. Great, great responses. And I'm gonna just come in counselor mode and say, Right now, for all the students in this <clears throat> who are attending this workshop, you're in the best opportunity to network. Even though you might not have your degrees, you might not have the work experience, you are going to classes, you're attending extracurricular events with students who you never know, they could be your boss, right? They could be someone that you eventually are working in the same field in. Uh, for myself, I will say I was not the most outgoing person when it came to networking, uh, like what was said, but I joined organizations, right? I try to join clubs if I could, um, whether it was something silly like a video game thing, right? You're gonna be meeting people, just like I said, even if they're not from your field, they might know someone who's from that field is looking for someone, right? When I went into, when I transferred to a four-year university, I joined uh, a Greek um, fraternity, right? And that was great because I not only got connected with people at my own chapter, but I also met people across the state, other states, right? There was people who I didn't even know once I finished my master's who were like, hey, I'll, 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 I'm, I'm a dean at this community college. I'll, I'll, I'll hire you as an adjunct um, right now without even knowing me, right? So you never know where opportunities could come in. So join extracurriculars as much as you can. Try to talk with people in your classes, go to tutoring, you'll, you'll, you'll find people in your, your major in those, right? And who knows, you know, add them to social media, LinkedIn, all of it. You know, down the line, that that person could, you know, eventually help you with the job. Okay, so great responses from our panel. I see Juliana had a question in the chat. Um, how do you find balance between your career and work life? Oh my gosh, this is a daily thing. I, um, especially with COVID and like working from home, like I have to be intentional about separating work from. Um, you know, home is, you know, I can't leave work at work anymore because work is now in my home. So I have to be intentional about making sure that I am still doing things that fulfill me uh, personally, like, you know, producing film or whether that is, you know, scrapbooking or, you know, shopping, not to break the bank or <laughs> just learning different things. But you have to be intentional about keeping a personal life so you don't get into kind of this, um, this rut where you're like, you know, maybe you're in a, you know, situation where work is going great, but if work is not going great and you don't have a personal life, you find yourself in kind of like this circular where everything sucks, everything, you know, it's just a cycle and there's no vision out of there. But when you make, be, are intentional about having a personal life and like having friends and doing things that fulfill you, if you're not in your, you know, career that you want to be, then that personal life helps offset that. So I am intentional about uh, meeting with friends, having lunch, uh, keeping up with family, uh, doing virtual birthdays, and making sure that I am not making work kind of my end all be all. Like I make sure like, okay, I, after this meeting, whether I have to work a couple hours after work, I am checking out at a certain point and it's me time, it's family time, it's, you know, personal experience time. So make sure you're intentional about 
keeping your personal life because as you move up the career ladder, you have less personal time. So it's important to protect that. As a student, I'll say this beautiful student planner is what has kept my life together for the past few years. Um, being able to uh, have questions in there that make me uh, realize that I this is now the time to separate work and you know clock out or clock out from school or tell my kids, hey, I'd love to take you to the mall this weekend, but like you, mommy's in school too, and I have work to do too, and I have assignments and projects. Or sometimes I'll ask them, so you want to help me with the project? Or and then they'll be like, no, mom, we get it, we understand. And then even from there, makeup is my vanity project, and like I uh, like I like to say, and so that's where I go to find solace to just. Pay Paint without any kind of expectations or just to be able to enjoy something without being you know monitored or having to be organized or structured it's just like a free flowing energy thing and then after that dancing but that's kind of like a cheat because I get to go out with my husband so like I get to like do both at the same time so finding the balance finding where you can inject business and pleasure and then finding where you can inject pleasure in business and then having them both separated like a math equation you know you got one two and then three in the middle so uh, that's what I do so I'm going to go ahead and throw that question to, to Dr. Juke, and I'll let him take over after that. But <laughs> That's all right. I was going to say, is it really cheating, though? Um, <laughs> because, I mean, my partner and I, we started doing yoga and meditation in the morning at 6 a.m. because we wanted to create that quality time that we usually wouldn't have. You know, I work here. She works there. By the time we go and do our separate things and we come back, you just want to walk the dog and go to bed, <laughs> you know? And so you actually do have to... I wholeheartedly agree on one end we're telling you do as much as you can on the other end we're telling you take time for yourself sometimes those two equations don't usually uh, add up and so you have to be intentional about saying at this time on this day i am making time for myself uh i'm making time for what feeds me or what i'm you know whether it's going to the beach or taking a ride or doing the makeup whatever that looks like prioritize that because that honestly is what's going to center you to be able to do well in the school field in the career field you can't do it all you will burn yourself out and we don't want that for you um i believe i jumped back in after our last question which was from juliana so do we have any other questions from the do have a question for Sophia. I know you mentioned a little bit in your bio that you were um, getting into producing. Yes. So y'all want to go check out the house? And I'm really intrigued to know what that would look what that looks like and, and what you're working on if you could share it with us. Um yes, yeah, so I've worked on a number of uh, bit music videos for independent artists as well as um, I just did a marketing campaign for American Girl. Um, they launched three new dolls um, last year during the winter. And so um, right now I am working on a project uh, for the academies. And then I'm also in pre-production for a film, which is basically about uh, finding um, one of the main characters is HIV positive. So still finding love while HIV positive. Um, and so the film is about like resources uh, for not only people in the LGBT community, but as well as people who rec you know, are identify as heterosexual. Like it's not specifically a, a disease for one group of people. So we're building kind of like a community around it, working with different organizations to be able to have resources. Um, so that's what the film is about. And, you know, and you know, to have those taboo conversations, because that's still kind of taboo, you know, HIV and AIDS is taboo in the African American community, and it shouldn't be, it affects us all. So um, that's one of my passion projects, kind of getting behind things that are like, have like a social impact behind them as well. Very cool. I, I remember um, in one of the earlier questions, Jessica said, you know, she wanted to get into this industry so that we could reclaim the narrative that's told about us. And I think that's exactly what this is about. And AIDS affects everyone yeah. you know Absolutely. i mean the most the most uh, uh famous person we know that got aids was magic johnson he happens to be black folks if you didn't know he is you know and and so at the end of the day it, you know don't believe the hype he, he's black and he's heterosexual by the way so 
it is not a you know some a, a disease that can be put in a specific box and the more you learn and the more you know about um the people and the disease itself the more you you'll be able to find empathy and be able to i think uh navigate the world with whatever other uh, challenges come up because aids is just one of them <laughs> Yeah, and it affects us all. Like my, I lost my father to HIV, so it's definitely a project that hits home. But I think we've all been affected in one way or another, whether it's friends or you know we know someone. So, um, you know, that's just one of my passion projects that I keep going. You know, along with work, so that's kind of where I found my balance. Like I'm in operations so much, but this allows me to be a little bit creative, but also bring my operational skills to it. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, any other questions that we that may have come up that you heard from one of our panelists or my my co-facilitator extraordinaire that, that we <laughs> that we bumped up today? I want to add, if it's okay, just to for just for the sake of our panelists um, to complete, I'll put it in the chat one last time. But please fill out the um, survey because it, it helps us with our learning outcomes and things that we are trying to do with LA City College. And, and it'll provide some really great feedback for our panelists. Um, I also want to do a shameless plug for our Black History Month career panel tomorrow at the same time. Um, Jessica, we hope to have you back, by the way. Um, we do have three panelists and Sophia. Um, we very much appreciate you in, in all of your amazing insights, seriously. Um, and we hope to have you back um, again. But again, I, I just like to thank everybody for joining us today. And it's very important for us to get your feedback. So if you found this uh, panel and other panels to be helpful, please uh, go ahead in the chat and, um, and complete that survey. It's very helpful. Thank you. Cool, we had one question that just came in which I think is a, a loaded question. <laughs> well, not loaded, but it's, it's gonna be an interesting answer. Um, I think you could go a few different ways with it. And the question says, how long does it take to get into the entertainment business? And I think it depends, but I'll let Sophia and or Jessica tell you about their experiences about getting into the entertainment business. Um, it is a loaded question. I think it definitely depends on what you mean by getting into <laughs> the industry like i have a ton of friends who are directors uh producers like my friend is uh angel christy christy williams she's directing a number of uh shows for netflix and she actually worked with ava right now and then my friends are the people who produce tommy and cody who produce back love so they're in the industry but they've also created their own opportunities their own production companies and that comes through again with networking like you can get into the industry, you can work for these big organizations, these big companies and kind of get the standard paycheck, or you can be your own boss, which they have chosen to do. So, um, like I said, depends on you and like what you're looking into. And like we've been saying constantly on here is like networking, like networking is key. And, you know, you can do enough networking where you can be self-sufficient and have your own kind of thing going, which, you know, me, I, I'm more word of mouth. So like a lot of people that I've worked with, I keep my circle kind of tight because there's certain productions I like to go on. And I like productions where it's produced in love. And I don't like those spaces where, you know, people come in with ego and, you know, just making it a terrible situation for everyone. But I have built that kind of community around me and you don't get that going into these big companies. So it depends on you. Um, you can get in right away with being a PA and kind of working your way up and like paying your dues is what they're calling them. Or you can volunteer your time um, on Mandy. There's ton of, tons of productions, whether they are people doing their thesis um, in school or just their kind of side independent projects. But I guarantee you volunteering those are people you'll get, be exposed to people who are actually in the industry who, you know, these are their side passion projects because what they're working on as their regular job is not their passion. So um, it depends on you, but like I said, getting as much um, exposure, even, you know, there's, I'm sure there's film class, film schools there, you know, students who are producing things who need people to help. Like that is you getting a credit on someone's film. Um, that is exposing you to what it's like to be in on a production, you know, 
volunteering your time. So there's really no expectations where a lot of these companies want you to kind of come in and know the lingual. So it's important to kind of get that experience. Um, and you guys are in the perfect opportunity, you know, at school and having exposure to these um, different clubs and, you know, degrees where you can learn and have classes and get exposure and network here because the people you're networking here are definitely going to be the people in your field um, later on. Absolutely. Um, any other questions? Hi, um, can I just ask, come on the mic? Is that okay? Please go ahead. Okay, bet. I'm gonna spit on the mic. <laughs> I'll just play. Okay, hey, what's poppin'? Um, my name is Steven, or you know me as Stevie, and uh, I'm a first year uh, with Los Angeles City College. Um, I'm originally from Maryland, born in New York, and so I moved out here to be independent. Um, currently, I'm at my nine to five. I'm a youth advocate for multiple nonprofits. Uh, one right now is Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, but I normally work with the LGBT Center and with Reach LA. And through there, I've been gaining a lot of like performance opportunities. Um, and so I would like to level myself up um, as a performer and uh, grow my skills. However, I don't have a lot of time to take all of the classes that LACC may offer in regards to being able to do that. So instead of me just kind of like being sad and not doing anything, I thought to just go on the street and do things. So I've done live performances at different bars and restaurants. And so I was curious to know with the studio that Los Angeles City College has, like, um, are you, is anybody able to like assist students to get into using that? Um, because like I would like to record music. So then after I perform it live, then they have something that they can, um, that's tangible uh, for them to listen to afterwards. So the short answer is yes, we do have a theater, studio, recording, et cetera, that are available here and available to students. COVID has changed the rules for access to those things. So I have to go back and check the dean and the people that oversee those areas, what you would need to do to get access to it. But yes, the answer is yes. They were made for you and not for us. Um, so um, if you want to, um, I'll drop my email address in the chat. That way, send me an email so I can follow, I can put you in touch directly with the person that um, oversees those areas so that we can get you access because um, that's what they're for. They're for. Okay. Bye. Thank you for the question also, and welcome to the West Coast. Oh, thanks for having me. I really liked it. Uh, it's cold right now, but I like it. <laughs> it also, is Stevie, freezing. Also, Stevie, I want to make sure that we connect with you in Yamoja, because we do, Dr. Simmons did post in the chat, we have open mic nights and different um, um, events and activities to showcase students' talent. And so we will definitely love to, to have you. So we'll connect um, after this. Okay. Yeah, I would love to, um, I'd love to join and like to be a part of it. Um, I think that um, Black entertainment is evolving itself. And I think like, if not just from theater um, to then doing television and film, now you have like web three where everyone's like going into the internet and like um, now like entertainment itself is just changing constantly. And so um, I think like the sooner that I can bring my skills to the table and help other people and vice versa, I think that we can definitely like stand together because that would be cool. You know, they'd be trying us out here, but it's okay because as long as we're like together, then like we can't, there's no way that we can fail. And so I've, I've learned that like doing uh, youth advocacy um, from like seeing like being, it's important to like help other people and to uh, not sacrifice, but like compromise yourself and like your um, compromise, like things that you may have been taught um, to be like, oh, wow, that actually is like bad. But actually, like if you take the time to learn it, it actually is a good thing. And so um, I'm vibing with that. So thanks for all the help and all the like the, um, the emails and stuff. And I'm gonna get to you. Awesome. I'm get to you. Is there anyone else that wanted to chime in? And like I said, we, we don't have that rigid of a structure. So if you have a question for any one of us, not just a panelist, feel free to jump in. We have about another good 20 minutes with you. Okay, um, what about, what would you suggest about when writing uh, for grants? Um, so like maybe like you can't fund your own um, 
uh, performing arts projects, but there are city grants that you can apply to. Um, so I've been doing a lot of research in that, um, which like I'm surprised like a lot of people be like, I cannot afford to pay for my music, but it's like, boo, I'm telling you these city grants, you just gotta go and like look up the grants and like people are willing to like give you the money. So like what advice would anybody give like when applying to grants? Like what are some things that I should focus on when thinking about describing the project to people or thinking about key points that I should um, make sure that I uh, have detailed? So before I jump in, I'm going to look at my fellow panelists to see if anybody has expertise in grant writing before I go. <laughs> yeah. I don't have expertise in grant writing, but I know where you can find grants for people who are wanting to like do music and then possibly like share that aspect. And that's what the Los Angeles Arts Council, they're always looking to give out grants for people who are wanting to like teach music or, or, you know, facilitate programming for the youth here, the arts in, for incarcerated youth network, they're always looking for people to give grants to, to facilitate programming. So if you can't necessarily get your music out there from the standard platforms on iTunes and Amazon, like all those other platforms, I will say that you should probably reach back into the community and go share first. So then that way you can do twofold. You can get your talent out there, but you can also give back as well. So I know they're always giving out grants for that because that's what I used to work in, getting those grants and then facilitating. So I would get a grant, I'd call up like a few of my DJ friends or call up some artists I knew who were teaching like songwriting classes and had them go out to the parks and teach those kind of things. So that's- I think Stevie's question is one step before that is how do you write the grant? How do you tailor the grant to, how do you tailor the narrative about your music to get the grant? And, and you're absolutely right. It's the um, same way as you would a podcast, something you're passionate about, something you're informed about, something that you can share to teach. Very cool, yeah. And so Stevie, I just wrote one myself. Um, there is no secret sauce to writing for a grant. They, you need to sell them on the idea that you are putting, what, what, what sets your project apart from what somebody else is doing? So introducing yourself, what you're passionate about, what you'll be using the funds for. And as we mentioned, knowing a little bit about budgeting helps because if you speak the language that they would be looking for in terms of um, how you'd be the inventory, if whatever you're doing is gonna have inventory or the returns, if anything. So they understand that you know what you're doing and they are willing to invest and or give you money to further your project. Um, there's no formula, to be honest with you. It's really about you presenting your project and giving and having them buy into the idea that it is worth funding. Um, there are samples for how to write a grant um, that I found online uh, when I was writing mine. I'm, honestly, Google is how I found them. Um, and then I sat through two or three workshops that were free through some no nonprofits about how to apply to, because there's some grants that are a little bit more involved like STEM grants or federal grants, but you know, you, you, you work your way up to writing for those because those of course give you millions of dollars. But I'm happy to share that, that information with you if, if it will help. I would also say I forget the name there's like it's for students and it's like grants and um but it's basically it's like unrestricted funds so like whether you're writing an essay uh submitting to an essay competition or you um based on your degree I have to remember that but I think those are easier to get as opposed to grants that have kind of working stipulations like you have to deliver xyz whether it's research or you know what your program is for that grant um so if like teaching like you have to have like your whole syllabus together and what you're going to be teaching um so i definitely think looking into the grant that actually fits what you're going to be looking and then me also when i'm fundraising for my films i reach out to like small businesses people i know that have interested interest in the subject that i'm dealing with so whatever your music is about like if you find people that have interest in that reach out to them they may be able to donate if you're uh if you're performing at a uh, an event or even working on a project like you can have sponsorship like hey if you guys sponsor me like i'll give you a shout out on tiktok or twitter or 
you know, I'll give you a digital copy of my poster. Or I'll send you a copy of my song once it's finished. So definitely looking at that, like, don't just limit yourself to grants. Like, don't be afraid to just send out kind of, you know, emails and letters to people, even go inside stores and talk like, hey, I'm a, you know, independent artist and I have a project coming up and I'm looking for funding, you know, would you be interested? And they may or may not, but um, definitely you should have information kind of like a one sheeter together about it and just don't limit yourself to grants too, um, cause those have a lot of restrictions, but I would definitely look at the ones that are unrestricted, um, to, to kind of, um, go after. Very cool. We had a question from, I think it's Malaysia. Um, Dr. Juve, yes. real quick, we, we skipped a question oh, from Anthony. Uh, <clears throat> is it true you have to know someone to make it big or does it really go off of what kind of work you produce? I, I think it's based on you and your work. Um, does it help knowing people? Yes, but also like if you are truly like what it success is like it, it's what you make it. So it's like, what is your goal? Is your goal to get into an industry, make a great salary, be successful, or is your end goal to be famous? So it depends on what you're looking for, because there's a lot of people behind the scenes that you don't know who are bringing in lots of money and still very successful and people in the industry know who they are. So it depends on what success looks like, uh, for you, but no, you don't, it's not a, a prerequisite to know people to make it big in the industry. But I think what your idea of big is, um, probably I would play there a little bit to see what that means to you. Thank you, Dr. Simmons, I had skipped that one. Um, and so the next question was, um, I am more interested in the management side of the entertainment industry. What advice do you have for someone that is interested in agent and production management? Sorry, artist and production management. I would say not only volunteer, but try to find an assistant position for someone who is in the entertainment um, industry. There are always people looking for um, talent managers and talent agents who are looking for assistance. Um, you know, via job boards, um, Craigslist, that is definitely a great place to kind of get your exposure to and experience because you're going to see what an agent who is actually responsible for managing talent has to deal with or working in production has to deal with. And then that'll inform you if that is the path that you want to take. But definitely uh, assistant work is a great way to, to get in there. Uh, also, you know, like, uh, our counselors are suggesting get to know the Emoja students. We have a student right now, Stevie, who is an artist looking for opportunities to you know, get his music out there. And then you have a student who is looking for opportunities to help manage an artist. You guys are at the same kind of peer level. You guys could definitely help each other grow in that aspect and uh, develop those skills that you need. So Stevie would be like, yo, I need somebody to go out there and talk to different uh, venues and book me. And then you're like, okay, cool. I can call different venues and see if they, you know, be willing to have you on their, you know, their list or whatever they're doing for that time. So just network with everybody in your community. Right, I think I think we lost Dr. Ju. <laughs> uh, Angie, you want to get the next question? All right. Is this one from Anthony? I love singing. How would you start getting your voice out there? And heard of what you love? Okay, so so this person, um, Anthony is asking that um, he loves to sing. And so, how would you suggest or give advice of how he start getting his voice out there and heard? Uh, you would go ahead. <laughs> I say I work with a few independent artists and like their TikTok, their Instagram and their YouTube are kind of their go to channels. It's free. Um, it gets you exposure. And um, especially with COVID, with there not being kind of like the open mics like there usually are and the places for you to sing. Um, it's kind of it's really free advertisement for you. Um, I know people who sing at, you know, Santa Monica at the promenade. I think it's only like $50 to get a permit to be able to sing there. 
uh, for a month, but it's, it's, it's exposure and like not being afraid to go after what you want and putting yourself out there. But definitely, um, if you can't get a hold of those events, um, use your, you your Instagram, use your YouTube, like there, a lot of these people are wanting people to come with like a following. So it's, it's great to kind of build that up. And then uh, once you have a finished product, you definitely want to get it into the hands of the local DJs. Uh, don't, uh, don't forsake the fact that they're the ones that are introducing new music weekly on a weekly basis to the communities that are more likely to pick up your music and the demographics you're looking for. Also, uh, get in contact with the radio stations, uh, the ones on campus, the local community sponsored ones, and anyone that would be willing to like introduce new music. And then definitely take advantage of your social media. Uh, going live uh, is not easy, especially when you're doing music, you get hit with copyright uh, and and like all kind of like, oh, you can't play this because it's not your music. So definitely always have a try to have original music. Uh, so then that way it's not being impacted and your your talent isn't being taken away because you're not following protocol or you don't have the rights to sing a cover song or something like that. SoundCloud is also a really good one. I'm a SoundCloud junkie. And a lot of times when I look for new music and new talent, I go through SoundCloud and just kind of comb who's out there organic versus with this main production. If you don't take advantage of the little grassroots uh, people that are opening the door for us to do things on our own, we'll always be limited to what the major company and the major labels want us to do. So uh, little mom and pop, uh, pop up uh, shops, people that are having like vendor uh, festivals and different like, you know, markets offer to go and do some entertainment in between, you know, like you never know if you're out there singing at, you know, someone's baby shower or someone's wedding that you could definitely get the opportunity to do bigger and better things or get more bookings. And then also working with, um, like the composers union, like BMI, ASCAP, like they're, they're always doing events. So even emailing them, I'm sure they had um, internship opportunities with volunteer opportunities, um, depending on your genre, get in contact with them. Like, um, you know, they, they work at all these different events. There's always music behind films. There's always music, you know, with events and they're helping out. So they're also someone that can be a resource to you if you're in the music industry. And at some point you will need representation. So it doesn't hurt to reach out to them and even, you know, get some just general information. Like, how do you get started? How, you know, what should I be doing to put myself out there? How do I grow myself? There are plenty of people um, within those organizations that can help you. Great advice. I just wanted to um, just chime in with what's going on in the chat. Malaysia is going to work with Stevie. I mean, there's a connection right there. So I just, I'm just so, <laughs> so excited yeah. to see that. Um, I, got and then also, that, I got her on that job right there. I see her on the, there. <laughs> and then um, also to um, Dr. Uh, I'm sorry, um, David Turcotte, our um, career counselor has posted the survey again in the chat. So in order for us to continue to keep bringing these amazing panelists to you, we really need your feedback. So if you could just take a moment and do the complete the short survey if you haven't already, um, and just go ahead and give us your feedback so we can use that to help us bring in more people and actually bring um, these two awesome panelists back as well. So if you could please complete the survey, we really would um, appreciate that. Thank you. And if you have any other questions, um, I, I don't know, Dr. Drew, if you have a little bit more time or we... Andrea, I'm having problems opening the form. Uh, can oh. you ask him to send it again? Okay, we'll do. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. no problem. I will um, recopy it and put it in. I think I just put it into the chat. Um, it's showing an error. Okay, let me let me take a look at that and I'll resubmit it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it looks like the link is incomplete, David. Yeah. <laughs> And unfortunately, uh, Zoom had kicked me off, so I can't even go all the way back up to, to the original link. <laughs> but yes, we should be able to post that for you, Stevie, and the rest of us so we can do it. We have about four more minutes before we wrap up. So I will actually start off by, uh, by saying thank you to you in the audience, because it really has given us an opportunity to, um, to share and to take you know, memory, you know, go down memory lane to figure out, you know, how did we get to where we got to? Um, we really thank you for, 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 for giving us the opportunity to do this. And to our panelists, um, we wouldn't have be anywhere if we weren't able to see the folks that are currently going to school. That's what success looks like. 
that's what success looks like for this person. It may not be the same for you, but if you stick to your guns and you get to you do what it is that is right for you, you could be this person that is a voice for African American people, a voice in the arts industry, a voice as a, a producer, actor, someone that's behind the scenes, someone that is singing. We've made connections here, so I just want to say a huge thank you to you, um, and um, we really appreciate you taking almost two hours of your time to really share your, your you know your gems with us. And so thank you, Jessica. Thank you, uh, Sophia. Um, and we look forward to having you back on. And now I'll give you, you know, closing, any closing remarks that you might have for us in the next, let's say 30, 60 seconds, <laughs> go. <laughs> sure, I will say um, whatever you, wherever you are on your journey, just continue to press forward. Like it's, it, it's going to get hard. It will get hard, but it is worth it in the end, um, the success and like where you're going to end up in your career. So, you know, if, even if you don't feel like you have an experience, go for it. Like I said, don't let job requirements stop you from applying for that job. Use everything as a learning opportunity to continue to develop yourself and to, to move on to that next level. We all had to start somewhere. I started out with several internships volunteering where I wasn't going to get paid. I still volunteer from time to time. So it, it, it never stopped being a learner, be a life learner and continue to grow. And let me know if there's anything I can help you guys with. I'm here to be of service. Cool. How about you, Jessica? I just want to say that I'm ever grateful once again for being here. Uh, thankful for the culmination of all my experiences to get me to the decision that led me back to school. And just grateful that there's a support system out there knowing that there's people that have gone before me and have laid the way and not only opened the door, but have built a room. And so Ms. Alexander, thank you for building the rooms that we need to enter so that you can go on and build houses and we can maintain those rooms and build more rooms to build this beautiful house that's going to definitely change the narrative of how we are perceived and then definitely upgrade ourselves and give us the respect that we know we deserve for the things that we know we do and we can do so just grateful to be here go you moja community bop, 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 bop. And, uh, yeah that's it <laughs> Thank you very much, Jessica. And on that note, I'll say thank you very much to all the rest of you. Have a good rest of your Wednesday afternoon. Um, and we look forward to, I, I believe there's one of these tomorrow that I will not be moderating, unfortunately, but I think you'll be in the great hands of Jessica. And we have a great lineup for you as well. So please come back tomorrow, 11 to 1. And we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you again. I'll stay on if you have any questions for us. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Sophia. Thank you. Thanks, Sophia, you. can you hold on for one second? Sure. I know I'm going to, I probably need to connect with Juliana too, but I definitely want your information because I believe uh, we can definitely get you connected with a lot of students and maybe some mentorship opportunities or whatever, uh, you know, the, the network that you have to connect our students. We have quite a few that are into arts, entertainment, and music. And so anything that you can help us with, we would greatly appreciate it for the Emoja community here at City. Yeah, I have tons of networking groups that are always looking for, for new uh, faces. So yeah. Love and share. I think as a matter of fact, when Yamoja just started, I referred a couple of your students over to uh, Sophia for some Ipsy events, mm -hmm. remember? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was, yeah. Way well, this is Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we just started Yamoja like four years ago, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And we, where yeah, you were we looking were for, uh, uh, Ipsy had an event, an event downtown, and actually, I believe two of your students, uh, participate in our event. Awesome. Right. So yeah, I definitely want us to have a, a build our network uh, with you for sure. I'm going to, um, I'll give you, um, I guess I can get your email and stuff from Juliana, your contact information. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll send it okay. over right now. All okay, right. Perfect. Take care, everyone. Right. Thank you very much Take again. Take care, everyone. Appreciate right. you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, family. Have a good rest of your day. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 1045. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jessica. No Thank worries. You. It was so much fun. I'm so excited. I was flexing on my Instagram. I was like, y'all don't know. Y'all <laughs> don't know. Y'all don't know. I said, link up for the tink up. Your girl doing big tinks. Okay, guys. <laughs> I'm happy to come back. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Sophia. Jessica. Thank you. Dr. Right, Sammy. God bless you guys. Thank God you. God bless you too.
Thank you. Iago, I wanted to connect you to A2 Men tomorrow. So if you could um, drop your email in the chat for me and I'll make sure I send you all the details. We had a student that dropped out, um, Dr. Drew, because they caught COVID. And so we can definitely um, get him um, registered. Please, that the opportunity is there for you. I hope you, you, you enjoy it as much as I did the first time I went. So have a great time. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. I'll drop it in now. Sounds okay, good. Okay, cool. See ya. And then what I'll do, I'll email you the form that you need to fill out just so we can get the inf your um, information. And then you'll get a confirmation email that you've been um, to fill out another form for like the field trip waiver and stuff like that. Um, we do have opportunity for you to stay on at the hotel if you want to. It's not mandatory, but if you do want to stay on, on the hotel, you can do that as well. Who knows? Save yourself some money. I don't need a, I don't need a broom. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's paid for, you know, school, school paying for it. So, but I'll, I'll email you all the details um, in just a few minutes. Okay. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right. You're Bye. welcome. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.